You know, Bill, What's that, this ain't so bad. No. This whole California spring trials thing, you gotta come out and do it yourself. First off, because we can only show you a little bit of what's new at the 22 trials, but also because it's just nice out here in California. You get to go to some cool places like the Filippani Ranch, which happens to be a winery, and that's the home of Doom and Orange. And we're gonna take a look at uh, annuals, perennials, and- Tropicals, indoor plants. That's uh, a lot of stuff. Let's get, get right to it right now. Normally, you'd come to a place like Duman, which is a traditional annual producer, you'd expect to see impatiens. In fact, generally, it's what we see, impatiens or petunias or something. We're being welcomed to the jungle. Why is that, Bill? Because we've got fun and games. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna slash that comment right out of here. Uh, anyway, it's pretty clear that Duman is getting into tropical foliage now uh, with a full, full line of succulents and uh, more traditional foliage plants like all these Tradescancias, a whole big collection of them. They've got a big collection of Peperomias as well. And uh, technically the key is, what, are the, what source are these coming from? Well, the, the Peperomias are kind of interesting because they're actually being produced as little plantlets. So they're taking cuttings, producing plantlets that'll then help uh, well, leaf, Yeah, leaf cuttings. They're sticking yeah. it. You know how you used to do it in, as, with an African violet? Your grandma did. Stick the leaf in the soil and a little plantlet appears. They're doing that with the peperomias. Yep. Not tissue culture. Nope, but four worlds. or five weeks and you've got a saleable plant. Yeah, so they've got a big line of, of the tropicals, uh, all available, unrooted cuttings. Um, and, and they're calling it sprouts. Right. Sprouts is part of that. So, uh, so uh, and a lot of cool stuff too, even like string of pearls, string of dolphins, which have been very trendy right now. The peperomias are trendy. And they have string of turtles coming. I don't even have that one in my collection. All right, now, Bill, uh, this is an annuals company, it first is. and foremost, although that's changing apparently. Let's take a look at an annual geranium right here. Uh, a brand new series, Bill, called Santana. This is, it's an interspecific series. Uh, and, and with the Santana program, it's all about uniformity across the colors, including the whites and the splash types. Now let's say that this is an interspecific geranium series. So they're going after a specific uh, series that's already out there. They are. And you all and know well who known. it is. It has a really good dark red. They have what appears to be a really nice dark red in their interspecific geranium series. Seven colors total, I think we it said. Is. And, is. and you know, you can, I can tell it's an interspecific because of the, the, the shape of the leaf. Uh, that looks a little like a zonal geranium, or excuse me, an, like ivy, an ivy geranium. And an interspecific is a cross between zonals and ivies. And uh, the zonals give you the, uh, the big flowers and the nice habit, and the ivies bring you lots and lots of flowers and that interesting leaf shape. So that's Santana. I really want to see this uh, white splash at retail, same time as the red. You want to see that nice. in your backyard. That's a good Don't point. fit. Definitely I know you. Did. Sample packs, hint, hint. Anyway, uh, for early, that's, you know, mid-season through mm -hmm. the summer, for early, early spring, you want some Nemesia. Uh, they're sort of an ephemeral treasure in the annual world. They don't last into the heat, but they're beautiful, and their Angel Art uh, series gets four new colors here. Yep, and I think that more than me wanting it, the retailers want this for their shoulder season business. That's right, get it in real, real early in the season. Beautiful colors, uh, grapefruit, nectarine, watermelon, and cherry, which suddenly makes me want a fruit salad. That's for So sure. that's uh, four new ones there. Big flowers on those. Uh, they're showing their regal geraniums. They're uh, uh, also known as Martha Washington's, just to really talk about how hard they're working to bring this mm -hmm. category back, right? Yep. Uh, don't know if there's any new new ones here, but they're really working hard on those. But what is new and probably the biggest story here mm. at Doom and Orange has got to be... Well, it's, called, it's called Intrinza. And Bill, you're our technical guy. <laughs> explain, explain what Intrinza is. Well, Intrinza is using the, the gene mapping technology and taking the intrinsic traits of plants and bringing them forward to reduce disease uh, issues and, uh, and, and bring all sorts of new power into these plants, which they're gonna be doing across multiple species. Yeah, basically let's them use the genes of the plant 
to find traits that you want, disease resistance, colors, it could be almost mm -hmm. anything, but it's what was already in the plant and it allows them to speed up the breeding process too. And the first place we're seeing that, other than some other categories like tulips, I think, is actually this series of smart tunias, um, with, which is uh, the Intrinza, it has the Intrinza label in it. And what makes these smart, Bill, besides the Intrinza? What's Intrinza bring to smart tunias? Well, smart brings uh, uh, TMV resistance. So it's back ah. mosaic virus resistance. And what they're doing is launching this smart tunia series to introduce the industry to Intrinza, which will then be applied to other existing series. So they're not gonna be changing names, but Smartunia is, is the new one here. And right. uh, one of the interesting things that they said is by 2025, all of Duman's petunias Everyone will, be will have smart. that. They'll all have that Intrinza power uh, through predictive breeding is the terminology yes. of these. Eight colors in the series, by the way, just to get started. This is the future. This is uh, technology in our industry. It's fun to see. That is pretty cool. Now we're going to take a look at uh, New Guinea Impatience, another new series. It's over here. New Guineas, Bill. <laughs> Absolutely, and a new a whole, series. A whole wall of them here. Let's, we have to divide them out because there's some old ones, or, or existing ones, let's mm -hmm. put it that way. Uh, we'll talk about, well, for instance, their Magnum series with giant flowers here gets a new salmon, salmon Magnum XL. That's as big as my head, Bill, right there. That is. And I got a big head. Yes, you do. <laughs> but the new series here is called Mega Guinea, and what's, the, what's special about this? over the Magnum XL? Well, they're putting one input or one, uh, one liner into a gallon. Uh, one liner instead yeah. of three in a gallon. Correct. Normally with like that, you'd put a three in. Yep. One. One. And fast finish? Fast finish, and I believe that our viewers are gonna love the thought of one plant per gallon. Well, it's certainly, it's actually their effort to be more sustainable. Yep. Make it easier on the grower. Yep, there's one a lot of pressure on growers right yeah. now, and uh, obviously, Reducing the number yeah. of inputs to create a beautiful plant like yeah. this is going to be just value. Just four colors right now, but they've got a lot coming. So watch for the mega guineas. Now, in some more existing series, the roller coasters named for this wavy edge. Mm -hmm. Not sure how many colors in the series now, but I do know it now gets an orange. See yeah, how we're that's doing beautiful. Orange. That, that makes one jumps sense. out. Yeah. Um, in the petticoat series, gets two new colors, both swirls, which would be this bi color, the pretty lighter center, orange swirl, and mango swirl. And then right next to it, not a New Guinea, a standalone begonia, begonia. that has got to be one of the, the tidiest and yet most colorful plants in yeah. the whole trial. And, and they seem to do that with begonias. It's a Boliviensis tuberous cross. We saw this in combos out back, maybe we'll see them again, mm -hmm. and it makes a beautiful, uh, it plays well with others. It really does, I love that plant. And we're gonna see it in some combos. I really like how it mixes. Uh, it does work well with others. Shade plant or maybe morning sun. Correct. So, and it's, again, it's a standalone. Uh, here's something, this is, this is kinda cool. Tick this is tock, cool. Yeah. Tick tock calabracoa. And if you didn't know better, you'd think, oh, they're just trying to jump on the whole uh, social media trend. No, they actually named this tick tock before that other tick tock thing came along. Because the bloom centers look like the hands of a clock. Right, if you get in right close on there, you can see the real nice clock hand pattern in there, the little spokes of the wheel. So that's tick tock orange is the addition to the series. And There's they also, also improved the blue. Which is really nice. I mean, this pattern is is definitely a retail standout. All right, so lots of calabacoas to see here. Yeah. Uh, but we're now gonna head out uh, back and see what kind of plants we can find outdoors. I should have uh, led in just to say, we're gonna go look at tropical plants here oh, at yeah. Duman. And you'd be like, tropicals, what are you talking about? Duman does annuals and perennials. Well, not just that anymore, right, Bill? Because no. we were looking at diplodenia and hibiscus. <laughs> They're beautiful. Uh, there's, uh, this, the Diplodenia line is brand new. In fact, they'd said, don't pay any attention to the names of the series, which right now says uh, Miami for the tall vining types and uh, Marbella for the uh, more bush, the bush types. types. But it just shows that they're getting into this uh, uh, Diplodenia category in a big way. Breeding is coming out of Spain on those. So there should be some good ones. Uh, but something they do have, and the name is correct, are these new hibiscus, tropical hibiscus, hibiscus rosa sinensis, and Caribbean is the series name. Bill, what, what can you add to that? 
Well, I mean, they're really working on the breeding of these um, to be more heat loving and then to have this tons of branching. And then what they talked about the flowers was interesting is that the petals overlap. So they're actually selecting for petals that that overlap. And, and they're how doing many that, new they're ones doing do that, they have? They're they doing have. that selecting in um, Spain and in the Netherlands. That's where the yeah. breeding is on these. They have six, six uh, introductions now but they said they've passed quarantine on more than 30. So there's a lot of these coming. That's right, I expect a lot of them coming. Uh, now we are going to look at perennials. They're way over there, so let's do it. We're gonna talk lavender because uh, Duman has introduced a lot of great new lavender in the last few years, and one of which is La Diva. And we actually saw these last year at summer trials, which is the key word here because as we, as we all know, it's not really hard to get these to flower in June, like we saw them last year. But what is more challenging is to get them to flower in this time of year. April and 1st, well it's actually March 31st. It's really kind of a, a big message. And this is actually a genetic message because these were selected, uh, the genetics, to actually flower much, much earlier. and. Uh, with with what Duman's doing with the cuttings and the way that they're handling the stock is they never hit 50 degrees so they're never going to hit that that dormancy so keep, keep the plant growing growing actively yep. and the grower then also has to keep the plant growing actively right they do and in 12 weeks they can bring a plant uh, bring a plant to market and hit that uh, that May timing, especially in the Midwest where I'm from, versus uh, a midsummer uh, uh, product. Right, so. now we should say, we're talking English lavender mm -hmm. right here, Angustifolia, uh, but they've got uh, French lavender, which is dentata, and they've yep. got and the Stochies type, the Spanish type. So wide range of lavender, and one of the messages too is about like the grocery business. The lavender is the perfect crossover flowering herb for the grocery business, if any of you are serving that market. Uh, over here, a quick, another perennial. Uh, this is a Gallardia Spin Top, a series that they have. And this is something I, I either I didn't know or I'd forgotten. We gotta remember, these are vegetative mm -hmm. Gallardias. These are perennial to zone three. three? Right, whereas the, the seed Gallardias uh, are biennials. They reseed and pop back up from new seedlings. Right. But they're not uh, they're not perennial like the True like perennial. the spin tops are. And the new one, this is mango. So this is the newest in the spin top series, which they've actually grown out the entire series, and it covers such a, a good range of color. Yep. So yeah, and the other thing is, zone three cold hardy, zone nine heat tolerance. Yeah. Yeah, they've, they've had these down at Costa Farms in Miami doing well. So that is a versatile plant. Spin Top Gallardia Mango is the new one. And uh, the last one we want to talk about is way down here, Penstemon back here. Now this is not new, new, mm. new, no, but, but, but the genetics are new, right Bill? Tell us about pristine Penstemon. So with the pristines, they've been reselected. So they've actually replaced the old genetics with new genetics that are selected for cold hardiness and first year flowering without any vernalization. I think the problem with the older genetics was if you tried to grow them starting in early spring or say winter time, you didn't get much flower power, right. like a couple of spikes. Now you can do that and get lots and lots of flowers. Yep. So and that's a good message. Three there. colors uh, that they're showing here is the nightshade, the princess pink, and the primrose. Right. All right, so that's the perennial message. Last thing we want to show you, there's a lovely confetti garden sign here leading us into this tent at the back of the, uh, the, the property here. And by the way, this is a gorgeous property to have a trial on. Uh, the confetti tent, you might call it. Hmm. Loads and loads of confetti combinations. Also, they're better together combinations, which are, uh, they're not planted together in one yeah. liner. These are recipes. Uh, but they're recipes and you, you order the cuttings, they all come packaged together. Uh, and in here, what we wanted to show you was that pretty bachelorette begonia and how beautiful it looks playing together in quite a few different uh, of these better together combinations. And they also have the pollinator's paradise, which is another whole combo program. Yep. Sort of like the better togethers and then a bunch of perennial mixes using only two inputs. Right. So they're not just, really a, not just about pretty combinations, but purposeful combinations. But you got to admit that Bachelorette looks really nice in here with the Coleus Great Falls. So that's sampling of, gosh, annuals 
perennials, tropicals, and houseplants yep. from Doom and Orange from the 2022 California Spring Trials. I'm about to fill up my notebook here. I'm about We've to fill up my garden here. Well, Bill. I think we're wrapped been, up here. It's been, a nice, it's been a nice day at Dooming, but this is kind of fun. This is. I haven't been on a swing in years. No. Make me feel like a kid again. I love it. Hey, Jenzy, give us a push. <laughs> How about an underdog?